Hello, my name is Hannah Eichelman. I am a master's student at Old Dominion University and I study the impact of climate change on coral reefs. Corals, like these on the Great Barrier Reef, are animals, but many people confuse them for rocks or even plants. Corals are colonial organisms and many individuals, called polyps, construct the beautiful coral reefs seen here. The coral polyp has tentacles, similar to a jellyfish, that allow it to capture food from the water. The coral animal itself is actually colorless and gets its bright colors from symbiotic algae living within its tissue. Like these guys. These symbiotic algae are called zooxanthellae, or zooks for short. The coral polyps and their associated algae live inside a skeleton that they secrete that is made of calcium carbonate. Most people are familiar with tropical coral reefs, where corals build beautiful and complex structures that support a huge diversity of life. Tropical coral reefs provide many services, including supporting humans with food, protecting shorelines from storms, and even providing us with medicines. But did you know that there are also coral reefs right here in Virginia? They are called temperate coral reefs, and they look pretty different from the tropical corals you may be used to seeing. While they may not look as pretty, they are just as important. One coral in particular makes up most of the reefs off the coast of Virginia, the northern star coral. These corals grow on hard substrates all the way from the Gulf of Mexico to Cape Cod. Off the coast of Virginia, the northern star coral is often found growing on shipwrecks or other artificial reefs. However, they can also be found growing on dock pilings and even on oyster reefs. Part of my job is to collect samples of the northern star coral and bring them back to the lab at ODU to study them. To do that, I put on my scuba gear and dive down to 70 feet, where I collect the corals from the wreck of the J.B. Eskridge, which sunk just a few miles off the coast of Virginia Beach. The view of the wreck at 70 feet looks something like this, although some days the water is really murky, making it pretty difficult to see anything. We collect the corals in baskets that we use to keep them safe until we get back to the surface. I also place temperature loggers on the wrecks so that I can understand how the temperature that the corals experience changes over the course of a year. Once we have finished collecting corals and setting up temperature loggers, we ascend with the corals and head back to the boat. We then head back to shore and bring the corals to the ODU Aquatics Facility. Here, the corals are placed in large aquaria that mimic their natural conditions. I then conduct experiments to understand how the northern star coral responds to increasing temperature. To do this, I essentially conduct a coral stress test, in which I increase the water temperature over the course of a day and use these chambers to monitor how the coral's biosigns, in this case respiration and photosynthesis, change. This tells me the temperature at which the corals become stressed. The northern star coral and other temperate corals are important to study and understand because they are able to withstand much more stressful conditions than tropical corals. Over the course of a year, the northern star coral lives in waters as cold as 0 degrees Celsius and as warm as 27 degrees Celsius. Understanding how temperate corals can withstand such variable environments could provide clues as to why tropical corals are currently suffering due to seawater temperature increases related to climate change. It is also thought that temperate corals, such as the northern star coral, provide important habitat to commercially valuable fishery species. It is crucial to understand more about these enigmatic corals in order to understand how the coast of Virginia could change in the future.